What's up, everybody? Today we're doing 2017 number three, enzyme structure, mutations, and dominance. Gibberellin is a primary plant hormone that promotes stem elongation, GA3H, is the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction from a precursor of gibberellin to the active form of gibberellin. A mutation results in a short plant phenotype. When a purebred tall is crossed with a purebred short, all the offspring in the F1 are tall, so they're heterozygous, and that tells us that tall is dominant. When the F1 cross are F1 plants are crossed with each other, 75% are tall and 25% are short, giving us that three to one ratio that we know from a monohybrid cross. They then give us this codon chart, so we know we're gonna have to use that in some way. So the wild type allele encodes for the enzyme with alanine, which is a non-polar side chain. And then we're gonna have mutant that has a three name, which is a polar side chain. Describe the effects of mutation on the enzyme and then provide reasoning to support how this mutation results in a short phenotype, a plant phenotype, in the homozygous process of plants. So if we go from having a non-polar side chain, it's going to face inward to a polar side chain that faces outward. So you have to think about the polarity of it. Non-polar is hydrophobic and it's going to hide from the aqueous solution versus polar is hydrophilic and it's going to kind of go towards that aqueous solution. And so we're going to see that the enzyme is going to change shape. And tradition, when enzymes change shape, they could actually change their function. So we're going to see that the amino acid substitution will change the shape, the structure, and the function of that protein. So then have to provide reasoning how that mutation results in a short plant phenotype. Well, if it has a different function because it has a different shape, then that GA3H is no longer able to convert the um, precursor of gibberellin to the active gibberellin. So we'll have less gibberellin and gibberellin's job was to provide the elongation of that stem. So the mutation decreases, eliminates gibberellin production. So the student says the change from a nonpolar amino acid to a polar disrupts the structure of the enzyme because the molecule is not charged, weak interactions such as van der Waals interactions will occur between the amino acids and other polar amino acids, will be attracted to each other, thus altering the folding of the protein. If the folding and the, the twisting of the enzyme is changed, the active site will change and the precursor gibberellin won't be able to bind and convert the active form of gibberellin. This means the stem elongation will not be promoted due to the decreased amounts of the active form of gibberellin. So part B says using the codon chart, which they gave us a beautiful codon chart, predict the change of the codon sequence that results in the substitution of alanine for threonine at position 229. So we have to look here at our amino acid chart. And so you notice that the first one in threonine is an A and the first one in alanine is a G. But other than that, they're the exact same C, C, U, U. And you can look at any of those four different bases. And so we notice that it's a point mutation in which the G of alanine is substituted for the A that's in threonine. And so we have a G to A in the first position of the codon. You could have also talked about in terms of the, you know, ACN or uh, GCN, um, or you could have talked about the template strand. The template strand would have the uh, N being the nucleotide, GC or NGT, um, and that would be anti-parallel, of course. And so the student says GCA to ACA, replace the first base with G with an A base. Um, so, of course, easy peasy, they had the prediction. Um, this was back in the before the redesign. I would recommend any time that you're doing anything, just write it as a complete sentence. Just write the change was and then what they wrote here. Describe how individuals with a one heterozygous or two homozygous copies of the wild type can have the same phenotype. So my students had a lot of issue with this. And so you have to think about it, that if it's heterozygous, they have one dominant allele versus if they're homozygous, they have two of those dominant alleles. So you can't just say, oh, well, it's a dominant trait. So it's going to mask the recessive. So what you need to think about is that each of these genes, its job is to make something. So the job of the dominant allele is to make that active um, or appropriate GA3H that's going to make the gibberellin. So there must be enough gibberellin formed that allows them both to be tall. Or you could talk about that there is enough of the enzyme made to allow for that conversion. So enough enzyme is produced from one wild type or dominant allele, or enough gibberellin is produced in the presence of one wild type or one dominant allele. So the student said the wild type GA3H would be dominant to mutant allele. So the wild type gene in the heterozygous plant could be expressed rather than the mutant gene. In the homozygous wild type, the wild type gene would be expressed as well. Both heterozygous and homozygous would convert gibberellins to promote the same elongation resulting in the same phenotype. So hope that was helpful. Remember, a penguin is just success. Bye, y'all.